In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to import, create and edit vectors that you can use to machine the name plate you can see on the screen. This is a two-piece assembly that will slot together using a mortise and tenon style arrangement. We're then going to look at organising our vectors onto layers, which will then aid us when we come to toolpath them. Let's just take a look at the vectors that we're going to be importing. So we're going to be importing these name vectors of Molly and these were created using the software so we created text we then node edited them we distorted them and then we used the rotation to put the letters on a slight slant and we ended up with the configuration that you can see now now you may wish to go ahead and create your own set of vectors and apply the same logic that we're going to use in this video to create your own name plaque if you wish to learn more about creating and editing text, I will link the text creation guide in the related video section of the tutorial browser. But now we're going to go ahead and open a fresh copy of the software and we're going to start by creating a new file. So just click this here and it's going to be a single sided job and we're going to specify a width of 12 inches and a height of 8 inches and we're going to have a thickness of 0.6 to five, like so, and we're going to have the Z0 position of the material surface and we're going to have the XY datum position in the lower left, like so. If you have all of these, just simply press OK and we can get started. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import the vectors. Now there's a number of ways we can do this. We can press Ctrl and I on the keyboard, like so, or we can utilize this icon here. And there's also an option in the file import menu as well. Navigate to your tutorials folder and go into the child name plaque files section and you'll find a name underscore dot eps file and that's the vectors that we're going to import. So select those and press open like so. And the first thing we're going to do is resize the vectors. So while they're still selected I'm just going to go to transform objects and set selected object size like so. And I'm going to set the anchor point in the center and I'm going to link XY and I'm simply just going to downsize these to have a width of 10. So just simply type that in, you'll see that height has automatically been changed and simply click apply and that will then resize that for us. Like so, so simply close out that form. And with any vectors that we import into the software, they always are put into this dead center of the work area. So we know as we transformed the height and width of this uh, vector selection with the anchor point in the center we know that this uh, arrangement is still in the center of our work area so with that we can simply select one of the vectors like so while they're still all selected and we can then maneuver them up to slightly uh, in the work area and um, we can do this we can al move it in alignment in the vertical axis of where they currently are by holding the alt key down on the keyboard like so and you'll notice that we can't then move it left or right unless we're going to do it in line with the horizontal axis of where they originally were, like so. And you can tell that we're in the dead center of the work area as well because you'll notice that now the smart cursor has got the horizontal and vertical lines of the dead center to the dead center of the work area. So I can literally just follow that straight up and then put the vectors around about here. I'm just going to deselect them by clicking into the white space. And I'm moving them up because now I want to create the rectangle for our name plaques base. Now I'm going to show you a method that you may not have used before to create rectangles. So I'm just going to go to the draw rectangle tool. I'm going to simply start dragging. And basically I want a rectangle which is 11 inches wide by 2 inches high. But I also want to have a radius external corner of half an inch. So the way we might normally do it is we may try and drag it out and get to 11 inches and now I can't see so let's just yeah, it's not working too well there so I may just want to go in here type 11 type in 2 radius external and 0 0.5 like so and click apply now another way that we could actually do this if we just close out I'm just going to delete that and let's go back into the draw rectangle tool I can then just start creating my rectangle like so, but I can specify this using purely transform shortcuts. So to apply the radius, we do that first. So we, we want a half inch 
radius. So as you can see down the bottom right, I've got an, a value of 0.5. I then type in the letter R, and you can see it's got R code on 0.5. Then I just go ahead and enter the width and height as I would using the transform sort shortcuts normally, which would be 11, comma, 2, hit enter, and there you go. So that is the way we can create that same name plan using purely keyboard shortcuts. And once we get the hang of these keyboard shortcuts, they can be really quick in aiding us creating the vectors really nice and smooth and efficiently. So now we've created that, I'm just going to close this. I'm just going to align it in the center. So I'm just going to go to Align Material. I'm just going to align it to the center of the sides, like so. And then I can just bring that down just a touch as well. And again, I'm just going to hold the Alt key while I do this. So I'm going to bring it down to around about there. That's fine. And now we've imported our text and we've created the outline for our base. We're going to go ahead now and create the shapes for our tabs to go on the ends of the M and L, which are then going to slot into that base. And then after that, we're going to then create the uh, slots for our base as well. So let's go into the Draw Rectangle tool again. And this time, we're going to use the form to create them. So I'm going to specify a width of the tab to be 0 0.5 and a height of the tab to be 3 eighths of an inch like so. I'm just going to press create and that's going to create that at this anchor point here like so. Let's close the form now. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to align this tab into the center of this line of the bottom left hand corner of the M. So let's just select that tab and select it again to put it into transform mode like so. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the top center of the rectangle like so and I'm just going to move it into the bottom line of the bottom left hand corner of the M. Now you'll see when I move it along this uh, horizontal line here you'll see that the cursor will change to this uh, icon here and that means that I have found the dead center between two points. Now that the two points being the ends, start and end of each of that span like so. So I can simply just let go there and know full well that that rectangle is in the dead center of that span there. Now I also want the exact same size tab but I want that to be in the center of this span on the bottom of this L here. Now I know that these are all in line because that's the way I created them so they can sit flush on the base when they're uh, machined. So what I'm going to do while it's still in transform mode I'm simply going to grab it by the center I'm going to hold ALT to keep it in horizontally aligned to the original like so so it won't go out of line and then what I'm going to do is while it's around the bottom base of the L I can simply come up and find that same icon again to know that I am now in the dead center of that uh, span of the bottom of that L. And I can simply just let go. Now if you happen to find yourself in a spot where you forgot to hold the control key down to create a copy of your original copied vector there's an easy way we can get around this. So while it's still selected we can press Control and C on the keyboard. That's going to create a copy of that vector. Then we just Control Z to undo. So it's going to put the vector back in the place where it originally came from. And then all we do is we simply press Control V to paste in the vector that we copied, which was also in the correct place, like so. Now the next thing that we're going to create is the vectors for our mortise slots. Now before we go ahead and create those, we need to find out how thick our tenons are going to be. Now I do intend on pocketing down the surface from the material, so from 0.625, and I do plan on cutting down an eighth of an inch around our tabs. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because I plan on doing a V profile with a V bit tool around the edge of our vectors, so the actual point where the tab will meet the uh, end point or the center point of that V profile is going to be an eighth below the surface of the material. So what I essentially need to create is a tab which is going to have the same width of half an inch like so and I need to minus an eighth of an inch off 0.625 which is also half an inch. So the easiest way to do this is just to create a rectangle of half an inch by half an inch. So I can do that by utilizing the transform shortcuts by just typing in 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 and enter and then there we have a half an inch by half an inch rectangle or square. So I'm going to simply close out of that form and now what I want to do is I want to 
place this uh, mortise slot in line with our previous tenant uh, rectangle that we created and then in the center of our name plaque space. So to do this should be rather simple. First I'm just going to move it out the way of the line of travel that I plan on uh, having with the tab so it doesn't pick up its own bounds as any of the points, specific points that I w uh, wish to reference. Then I'm just going to take the tab itself, align it to the center, follow that down like so. Then I'm going to come to the center of this and I bring it back out and you'll see that then I reawaken the center of that tab uh, below the M. And then I can just place it there like so. And then again, I can do the exact same thing for the one to align below the L. So I'm just going to horizontally uh, keep this in line. So I'm going to hold Alt. I'm just going to move this down like so. And I'm just going to wake up this point here. So the center of that tab, come back. And now we're centrally aligned on that horizontal uh, line that we've been given there and I'm going to this time press control and then I'm going to let go of the left mouse button and that will then create the copy for me on the base exactly in line with the tab above and we can show this by just bringing out a couple of guidelines like so you can see that they're both in line those two are in line like so and bring a vertical a horizontal one down even see that they're matched we are matched in the center and we're matched on the bottom as well so the next thing that I want to think about after creating the mortise slots is creating vectors to create a pocket around our tabs to pocket down an eighth of an inch. And then I also want to make duplicates of the vectors that I do have to create different vectors uh, of the same things but for toolpathing purposes. So I want to create a copy of an outline of all the letters including the tabs to create a profile boundary and then I also then want to have a, a separate copy with all the uh, letters like they are now uh, so that we can create some vectors that we can then V profile to give that look to the finished product that the letters are actually stacked upon each other and, that, and to do that we really need to start organizing and thinking about utilizing layers in our work and as of yet we've not even taken a look at the layers that we have so let's go up to the layers drop down up here so I'm just click on that and you'll see that we've got two layers in the layer manager and we have layer one which is always the default layer whenever we start a new copy of the software and a new job and you'll see at the moment that that has no vectors in it and that's denoted by the blank white icon here third along like so so we can essentially just right click and delete this layer like so and then we're left with the import hyphen name underscore text layer and that has all of our vectors on it and we can simply double click that icon and that will select everything that is on that layer. So I'm going to start organizing my layers and vectors onto different layers. So first of all I'm going to create the or just rename this layer actually to cutout like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating copies of vectors and putting them onto different layers and then I'll, after I've done all of that I'm then going to weld the uh, vectors together to create the actual cutouts that I need. So I'm just going to deselect everything and first I'm going to select all the text. Now we can do this multiple ways. We can select from left to right only enclosing the text only like so or we can simply just drag from right to left and just make sure that that box covers the, all the vectors or partially the vectors that we actually want to select like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over those selected. I'm going to copy to a new layer as basically I want to retain a copy of Molly vectors on the cutout layer as well. So I'm just going to copy to a new layer. I'm just going to call this the V profile layer as the vectors that I copy onto this is the vectors that I'm going to utilize to create the uh, profile toolpath with a V bit. So I'm going to copy those. I'm just going to turn that layer's visibility off. I'm going to make sure that new layer isn't the active one and just select OK like so. Then I want to create a copy of the tabs. So I'm just going to drag from left to right and only encase those vectors like so. I'm going to right click, copy to a layer like so. 
Now I'm not actually going to call this layer tabs, I'm going to call this pocket tabs as these are the vectors that I actually am going to expand and surround basically the uh, tabs that we are going to essentially pocket down and leave at half an inch thick. So I'm also going to uncheck the visibility of that layer and just press OK on that. And finally what we're going to do is we're going to move these slot vectors onto a new layer altogether. So we're just going to select this option to move to layer, create a new layer, it's going to call that slots. And we're going to keep this uh, actively visible as we're going to make some edits to this and you'll see those in just a moment. So once we've got the layer visible checked and layer is active unchecked, simply press OK. And now we've got all of our vectors on the right layers that we need them. Now it's simply just a matter of actually editing those vectors to suit what we actually want to get out of each layer when we come to toolpath them. So we'll start with the cutout layer. And from the cutout layer, basically what I want to do, end up with is one single vector, which is the outline of all the letters, including the tabs and the center of this uh, O here. And also we want just the outline for our base as well. Now the base is fine, that's already done for us, but I need to basically make just the outline of all these shapes here. Now we can do this by simply selecting all the vectors and we can simply go to using the WOW tool, like so. But you'll notice that has now moved the center of the O for us, as the tool is only used to create the basically the very outline of all the shapes selected. So how we can actually get around that is if we just press Control Z to undo that, we simply just deselect that one vector, like so, and then use the tool again. And then now you'll see that we have just the outlines for Molly, including the tabs and all the letters together, like so. Now you might think that we're finished with our cutout layer, what we need to do is really think about how we're going to toolpath these vectors and how they're then going to slot together when we, they actually come off the machine itself. Now, with any mortise and tenon arrangement, we've always got to be aware of the fact that we are going to be using a round tool to cut into the corners of the tabs and also the mortise slots themselves. Now, let's imagine that we're going to be using a 3 16th inch end mill. So I'm just going to go to the draw circle tool for a moment just to specify the diameter of 3 sixteenths. I'm just going to type in 3 divided by 16 and I'm going to press the equals key and that will give me the decimal value. I'm just going to just draw that circle on the screen there. Now this is going to represent that 3 sixteenths end mill. So if I just select it and just imagine that I'm doing the profile pass and I'm coming around like so and then I hit my corner of my tenon and what you can see straight away that we're going to be left with excess material due to the fact that we're using a round tool inevitably on a CNC machine on a square corner and we are going to be left with this radius that's going to be left on and what that basically means is that when it comes to fitting this tenon into this mortise slot that it's going to not fit all the way through because the obviously the width of the tenon is now extending outwards from this point here and we're also going to get the same problem when we come to pocket out the actual uh, mortise slots themselves. So again, let's bring the imaginary 3 16th inch tool here and you can see that we're also going to get that excess material left on all four sides of this mortise slot. So I'm just going to delete that and just press F on the keyboard to zoom to fit again. So now that we're aware of this problem, we need to come up with a solution whereby we can overcut into the corners of the tenon and, uh, and the corners of the mortise slot itself so that they can f fit snugly together. But obviously we want to try and minimize the aesthetic loss that we're going to get by overcutting into those corners. So what we can do is utilize the filleting tool. So if I just go over to the edit objects and go to the filleting tool here, and what we're going to do is we're going to utilize a T-bone fillet. And as you'll see, you can T-bone in either direction. So first of all, I'm just going to specify the radius of the tool. So first of all, I just need to find out again what the decimal value of 3 16 is. So I'm just going to type that in, press the equals key, 
And then if I just go to the end of that value, I can just press divided by 2 again and then equals to find out the uh, radius of that tool. Now I can see it's 0 0.09 and various other decimal places. So I may just want to actually round that up to 0 0.1 just to overcut the uh, fillet slightly just so we make up for any discrepancies within the tool itself and the uh, thickness of the material. So I'm just going to put exactly 0 0.1 of an inch. I'm just going to choose my T-bone fillet. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just first of all just going to demonstrate the uh, T-bones that are available to us. So if we come to this side of our tenon, just click like so, and you'll find that we'll be able to add a tenon that way. Now we can also add one uh, going vertically up as well. Now obviously that wouldn't benefit us in any way having that one there, so I'm just going to control Z that one and give that tenon the exact same fillet going inwards. And when we actually go to fit the uh, tenon into the base itself, we shouldn't notice at all any uh, overcuts into the material itself because that's going to be buried beneath the base. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the same over the other side. Now if I accidentally do go for the other fillet, I can just hover over and just click when the X uh, appears. I'm just going to this time just go here like so and there like so. Now what I'm now going to do is I'm also now going to fillet the mortise slot. So I'm just going to press F to zoom to fit on the keyboard. And we're going to do the same thing with the mortise slots. But I want to make sure that the T-bones this time flow horizontally. And the reason for this is the actual sign molly is going to be mounted vertically on here and all of this horizontal space here will be covered by the text, especially the areas where the mortise and tenon slot meet together. So I'm just going to zoom in a little and just put in those here. Just when the tick symbol comes up is when it's safe to click your left mouse button and actually apply a fillet. So I'm just going to do this like so and just undo that one and add that one there. I'm just going to press F on the keyboard again to zoom back to our drawing area. So now I'm satisfied that I've done everything to my vectors ready to machine our cutout vectors. So I can just close out of the Phillips tool there and now I can actually go ahead and change my layer to the V profiles. Now I want to go ahead and manipulate the vectors to create the vectors for my uh, profile toolpath which is going to be utilised in a VBIT tool. So I'm just going to uncheck the visibility of the slots layer, turn on the V profile layer and uh, turn off the visibility of the cutout layer and I'm going to make sure that the V profile layer is made active by clicking on it and you'll know that by it being bold and black as well like so. And I'm just going to click anywhere in the white space just to come out of the layer manager. Now these vectors are basically going to be used to create a profile on toolpath with a VBIT tool and we basically want to give the illusion that the letters are all stacked up on top of the one of one another. So basically we want to give the illusion that the M is beneath the O and the L is on top of the O, then the L is on top of the other L and the Y is on top of the last L. Now how we're going to do that is basically we're going to trim some of the vectors off. So if we come to edit objects and go to the interactive trim tool, like so, and with rejoin trim sections automatically on checked, we can simply come to the form and we can start to snip away the vectors that we don't need. Now to give the illusion that the O is sitting on top of the M, we basically need to remove this part of the M. So when, this, when the scissors open, like so, and we're near the vector that we want to remove, simply click with the left mouse button and that will then remove that vector. And But this time we want to make sure that this L is on top of the O, so I want to remove this part of the O, like so. And again, I want this L to look like it appears on top of this L, so I'm just going to remove that section here and I'm going to make sure that this section of the L is removed also. And that is literally all we need to do to create the vectors for our V profile toolpath. So I'm just going to close this tool. Now the last thing that we need to do at all to any of the vectors is simply create that pocket for the tabs. So if we go and turn the pocket tabs layer on like so and then make that the active layer 
and we simply just want to oversize these rectangles down and out a little bit just simply to overcut the actual area of the tenon that we're going to cut because if you imagine that we're going to cut down an eighth of an inch if we just did the actual size of the tenon we'd be left with those radiuses left on the corners as well so if we overcut it slightly we're going to make sure that all that area is flat and it's going to be ready for when we cut it out as well using the cutout path so I'm just going to press F on the keyboard here and I'm just going to go straight into the draw rectangle tool and press shift hold shift at the same time as selecting one of my rectangles and I'm literally just going to add on the radius of the tool that I'm using. Now I remember from earlier on that I did round up the radius to 0.1 so all I need to do is edit these to add 0.1 onto each of these. So it's pretty easy to work out so I can just change that to 0.6 and 0.475 like so. Hit apply and I can shift and select this rectangle just edit that again, 0 0.6, 0 0.475, apply, and then all I need to do is close this and just realign these shapes so that they're in the dead center of those letters there, just like so. And if we turn back on our cutout layer now, we should see that those fit nicely in those pocketed areas that we've just created. So that's it for this tutorial, please join us again for the toolpath in companion video and thanks for watching.